All right. So also is the court will learn in the affidavit for search warrant that Sheriff Liggett failed to inform Judge Diener, who has since recused himself from the case, that nothing, absolutely nothing links Richard Allen to Odinism or any religious cult. Also, no forensics such as DNA, no electronic data extracted from his computers or his phones or from his social media link Richard Allen to the crime scene. Additionally, nothing links Richard Allen to any of the Odinite suspects, the same Odinite suspects that evidence strongly supports sacrificed Abby and Libby in some sort of pagan ritual. Richard Allen had nothing to do with this crime, but rather is an innocent man, a patsy for the police, arrested 26 days before Oh, my election. God. 26 days before an election. That's when he was arrested. This is... Yeah, dude, like failure to pursue the Odinus links. Law enforcement, like, 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 like we, we can read this for days, but I, I just want to get through some of the, like, just the, the like, the mind blowing shit. Law enforcement's failure to actively pursue the obvious links between the crime scene and Odinism is confounding. It is even more confounding when days and weeks after the murders, a particular Odinite from Logansport named Brad Holder, your buddy, your guy that's super active on the Facebook as we speak. You want me to throw him up or you want to keep reading? Throw it up. Let's see what Brad's up to. Guys, let's well you let's 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 talk about Brad first and then we'll throw up his shit. Okay, yeah, let's talk about Brad. Uh, uh so a guy named Brad Holder posted on social media images mimicking the very runes found at the crime scene. A scene unreleased and unknown to the general public even to this day. Who is Brad Holder, you ask? Well, he was an Odinite whose son, Logan, I want you to digest what I'm about to read to you. He was an Odinite whose son, Logan, had been dating Abby. He's dating one of the victims. His son was dating one of the victims. All right. Brad Holder's social media post seemingly taunted the very police that refused to fully investigate him. The defense believes that the court will be shocked at the number of clues or Easter eggs, both before and after the murders that Holder openly posted on his Facebook page that pointed the finger to his involvement in the murders. So here is the picture on uh, Reddit of, this is Logan Holder and Abby Williams right here. Uh, this is the picture. Then here is, Here's Brad's guys. He is still on Facebook as we speak. If if they had the money, I'd sue Brad Rosie for the pain and anguish he has caused me and my family. All you armchair detectives out there, I'm taking. He's taking screenshots, folks. I'm taking screenshots of the comments you post. So keep it up, so uh, I can get some money out of this misery. And then some dude comments. The sad part in almost all of Odinism. Those kinds of sacrifices that were made that were made were almost actually all volunteers during rituals. So it would almost be out of characteristics for older knights to ritually kill those two Delphi girls, would it not? Sorry you're going through this, Brad. And Brad says, thanks for the support. So these guys are talking about Odinism and how they know about Odinism right now on Facebook as we speak. Like this is fucking insane. It's insane. I've never seen anything more insane. Here's his like, TikTok, folks, where he look at this he's guy, a veteran Freemason, practice jujitsu, boxing, and work out all the time. Who knows what the hell these videos are? There he is. I, <laughs> I don't know. I was scrolling through, and I'll tell you what, dude looks a lot like Bridge Guy. <laughs> here's out. his uh, here's his YouTube, folks, where he sh Brad shaves with music. Where Brad is. <laughs> Magnify Jesus. All right. Magnify Jesus. Oh. I'm not going to play these songs because I'm going to get uh, a copyright claim. But this is the guy, folks. And if we go to his photos, I bet you we find a lot of interesting things. So let's. He, this guy has not deleted anything, folks, despite being in this in this document. Um. This is just a lot of selfies, folks. A lot of selfies. All right, but I want you to look at all right. So this is like the bridge guy hat. See, see this one right here, Jay. Like the one uh, that the mouse is on right here. Next to, no, next to the baseball picture with behind the fence, where he's got the the hat with the glasses on top. Oh, right here. Okay. Yeah, like that, dude. I mean, 
like this is like he it's bridge guy it's like they're like it, he he looks more like bridge guy if you look at the two composites that they've done and one they abandon like when he's got the facial hair i mean come on dude all right you keep scrolling i'm gonna keep reading all right. However, a fact that is simply mind blowing to the defense is that Brad Holder was never considered a suspect in the murders of Abby and Libby. State Trooper Jerry Holman, one of law enforcement officers in charge of organizing and investigating the Delphi murders, claimed in his August 10th, 2023 deposition that Brad Holder was not really ever a suspect. Police reports written near the time of the murders reveal that Jerry Holman is telling the truth. Brad Holder was cleared as a suspect as quickly as an on March 16th, 2017. So a little over a month after the girls were killed. All right. Um, Brad holds it like, so dude, it's just like never ending. Like it's, it's hard for me to pick what to read to you. Cause like, there's nothing that's not insane. All right. So this is, this is where it gets really interesting. Okay. Um, not that all of it hasn't been really interesting. All right, so there's this guy, uh, and his name is... So this brings us to the Georgia thing they were talking about. Um, the investigation had barely begun, but the Unified Command had already cleared the very man that any person with even a small amount of common sense or curiosity would believe is a strong candidate for being in, involved in the murder of the girls, that being Brad Holder. For example, the court will learn that the Unified Command was aware of a very disturbing image on Brad Holder's social media accounts that actually mimicked the crime scene. On April 12th of 2017, a mere two months after the girls were killed, Trooper Joseph Ryan Winters received a, call, a phone call from a man in Georgia named Ryan Boucher, or Boucher, B-O-U-C-H-E-R, who had discovered disturbing images in Brad Holder's social media account. Having somehow learned that Brad Holder's son, Logan, had dated Abby Williams, Mr. Butcher began reviewing Brad Holder's social media history. One of the images that Butcher viewed on Brad Holder's social media account was an image of two dead women, two women either dead or posed if, if, as if they were dead, on the ground in what appeared to be a forest. Both women had tree limbs and sticks attached to their bodies. One of the women had her arms stretched out above her head, similar to the way that Libby's arm was stretched above her head. Both women were clothed and the stick and tree branch formations on these girls was different than the stick and tree branch formations on Abby and Libby, but otherwise it bore a very eerie similarity to the murder scene in Delphi. Ryan Butcher had no knowledge of the actual crime scene. However, after reviewing Brad Holder's social media sites, Butcher was disturbed at the image, as well as other images that provided insight into Brad Holder's fascination with runes. Believing that the disturbing images may be something of interest to those investigating the Delphi murders, Mr. Butcher contacted Toe Blazenby, who at the time was the sheriff of Carroll County. Blazenby quickly rebuffed Butcher, telling Butcher that Holder was not a suspect. Undeterred, Mr. Butcher contacted the state police where he ended up talking to Trooper Joseph Ryan Winters. After their conversation, uh, after their conversation, Winters memorialized the interaction, placed the images provided by Butcher into a Dropbox account. After creating the report, Winters then discussed his findings face to face with guess who? Jerry Holman. Hey, he Bob. Did. Yeah. Check out this post I just found. Uh, a dude hanging from a tree naked. Well, I started back acrylic. Hail Odin, Logan's Port. Indiana. This guy still has this shit up. He's crazy, dude. He's crazy. He's crazy. All right. So uh, the body in this memorandum will provide in details uh, the interaction between uh, Winters and Bocher. Uh, the defense does not believe the Unified in Command ever followed up on Winters' request. So Winter like asked them. He's like, "Look, this is all the shit that I've compiled from this guy. Why don't you check it out?" They said, "Yeah, we're good." Should be noted the disturbing images found by Butcher in Georgia and placed in a Dropbox by Winter were not, and still have not, been provided to the defense. In his recent deposition, Winter said that he had attempted to locate the images, but they were unavailable. However, because of the potential importance of those images to Richard Allen's case, the defense team located Butcher, then traveled to Georgia to meet with him. 
Those images are now in the possession of Richard's defense team, who then provided those images to law enforcement. Again, these were important images that law enforcement failed to turn over to the defense. Instead, the defense located these images in Georgia and then turned them over to the very people who had the obligation to provide them to the defense in the first place. You seen these pictures, Bob? Dude, I mean, that's all, yeah, that's all Odin shit, man. Like, th- look at that guy. Holy shit. Better dead than red. Hmm. This dude mm-hmm. still has this up. This is, this is. Oh, man. Um, Odin is watching you. Odin is watching you. Wow. Wow. All right. So I'm trying to pick and choose what I want. All right. So here, Unified Command. So we're, we're going to move on from our buddy here. Holder, and we're going to move to the next cat, Elvis Fields, like the terrible Bears quarterback, Josh Fields. Uh, Unified Command was aware that Elvis Fields confessed to his sister that he, Elvis, was involved in the murders, even providing to his sister intimate crime scene details of which only those present at the crime scene would have familiarity. Additionally, Elvis Fields told his sister, Mary, on February 14th, 2017, that he was present at the killings and that he, Elvis, now, quote, had a brother and was now, quote, part of a gang. In February of 2018, Elvis had been questioned by law enforcement. But, but, dude, listen to this. Quit scrolling. Listen. Sorry. Elvis Elvis had been questioned by law enforcement, but denied involvement in the murders. However, so they they talk to him a year later. They go talk to Elvis. Uh, However, after being dropped off at his trailer following the questions, Elvis turned around, walked back to the police car, and according to the police report, asked the state trooper if if his, Elvis's spit, is found on one of the girls, but he could explain it away, would he still be in trouble? What the fuck? Okay. The state trooper that heard Elvis utter these words, Kevin Murphy, (laughs) Kevin Murphy of the three, was not part of the unified command, but immediately relayed Elvis's disturbing question to Jay Harper of the unified command. Elvis also admitted to a different sister, Joyce, that he, in fact, spit on one of the girls. Elvis told Joyce that he was on a trail and a bridge with two girls that were killed and that he was going away for a long time. Elvis's alibi for February 13, 2017, was also probably flawed. State troopers who weren't part of the Unified Command determined that Elvis's roommate concocted a story concerning Elvis's whereabouts on February 13th of 2017. This roommate is named Rod Abrams. Abrams told a story claiming that on February 13th, 2017, that he, Rod Abrams, and Elvis Fields and a man named Ned Smith were visiting a sick friend in Muncie, Indiana. Unfortunately for Rod Adams, this story conflicted with the story that Elvis Fields told law enforcement as to his whereabouts on February 13th. These shady alibis were relayed to Unified Command. These shady alibis will further be explained in the body of the memorandum. Furthermore, Unified Command knew that on February 1st, 2018, Elvis's sister passed a polygraph examination when asked if she was telling the truth about what Elvis had uh, had confessed to her. Okay, so the sister went and took a poly, hooked up to the lie box. Unified commands to uh, failure to vigorously pursue the, pursue the obvious links between the crime scene and Odinism is even more inexplicable when evidence known to law enforcement included information about another Odinite named Patrick Westfall, who was living in Delphi, very close to the murder scene on February 13th, 2017. Okay, so evidence known to Unified Command included facts that fellow Odinites uh, Patrick Westfall and Brad Holder were close friends as late as January 21st, 2017. However, that friendship ended abruptly in February of 2017, the very month and year that the girls were murdered. 
The schism in their friendship resulted from a fight that occurred between Holder and Westfall in February of 2017, where, quote, he, Holder, and Westfall were in the woods near a river conducting a ritual. One of them said or did something the other did not agree with, and they no longer talked to each other. The river was near Patrick's house, which was right near the murder scene. An intoxicated Brad Holder shared this disturbing information with his ex-wife, Amber Holder. Amber then relayed this disturbing information to law enforcement, who were not a part of the Unified Command in 2019. The officers then relayed this disturbing information to Unified Command. Liggett, Tony Liggett, the sheriff, concealed this information from Judge Diener. So it's not included. Going back to the, the affidavit, okay? Okay, so then they learn in a totally different conversation with uh, his ex-wife, Brad Holder pointed the finger away from himself and directly at Patrick Westfall as being the person actually responsible for the murders of Abby and Libby. According to the police reports, Brad Holder told his ex-wife that Westfall and, quote, his people killed Abigail Williams and Liberty German because one of their mothers was mixing, in quotes, with, uh, with other people outside of the mother's race. There's your motive. Furthermore, Unified Command was aware that Brad Holder had told Amber that, quote, I can only protect you so much if you keep asking questions, end quote. Brad Holder fur, uh, further told his ex-wife Amber that Patrick Westfall had many people backing him uh, and that Westfall also has, quote, powerful friends. Liggett knew of this information for more than three years before Liggett saw, uh, sought a search warrant for Richard Allen's house, yet Liggett never shared information with Judge Diener. Additionally, Westfall provided a very weak alibi as to his whereabouts on February 13, 2017. Westfall told law enforcement that he was at home, the worst alibi in the world, the old I was at the crib alibi, uh, on the afternoon of Monday, February 13, 2017. The defense is unaware of any search warrant that Liggett sought to enter Westfall's house or whether Unified Command instructed law enforcement to knock on a single neighbor's door to verify Westfall's alibi. Uh, Bob, yeah. Look at the, look at this post I got right here. Uh, Patrick Westfall and myself have been talking bind ruins. What do you guys think? So many possibilities. This is all us still up on this man. Him and Patrick Westfall in 2016. Buffalo. One of the one of the posts was in Delphi. Like this is. I, I'm struggling to. It's mind blowing. It really is. It's absolutely mind blowing. Um, so they talk about another cat named Johnny Messer from Rushville. Johnny Messer was a recruiter for the Odinites. And there was also connective tissue between the Odinites from Delphi area, Brad Holder and Patrick Westfall, and the suspects from Rushville area, Elvis Fields and Rod Abrams. Delphi is located 126 miles from Rushville. Law enforcement knew that Johnny Messer was friends with Brad Holder and Patrick Westfall. Law enforcement also knew that Messer was acquaintances with Elvis Fields and Rod Abrams. Unified Command theoretically could claim and actually appears to be claiming that this connection is simply a bizarre coincidence. However, Unified Command not only knew that Elvis Fields and Rod Abrams and Pat, uh, Brad Holder and Patrick Westfall shared a common acquaintance, Johnny Messer, but also that Elvis Fields and Brad Holder follow each other on Facebook and even mimicked each other's Facebook pages with Elvis Fields actually recreating the photos that Holder posted on his own Facebook page. Oh man, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's hard. Um, and additionally, it's infuriating that Johnny Messer was also clear as a suspect in the murders when considering these facts that Johnny's ex-girlfriend, Taylor Hornaday, told police that Johnny Messer and Patrick Westfall were like brothers. She also told police that she had allowed Johnny to borrow her car. Dude, this, like, dude, it never stops getting insane. So so this is Johnny Messer, the recruiter for the Odin Knights. He, he borrowed his, his girl's whip, right? Okay, and she allowed Johnny to borrow her car on or around Valentine's Day 2017. So the girls were killed on the 13th, okay? So that's right around Valentine's Day. That's what, a day before, right? Valentine's Day is the 14th, yep. correct? Yep. Every day, every year, for as long year, as it existed. Every year. Okay. And that Johnny drove her car, quote, up there to hang with his Vinlander friends. You guys wondering what Vinlander is? Vinlander is a word, and this is in a footnote, interchangeable with those that practice Odinism. 
as state trooper Ro uh, Roland Purdy stated in his deposition, all members of Vinlanders are also Odinists. And that is cited at Purdy deposition, page 140, lines 1 through 25. Basically, the Vinlanders are a white supremacist group consisting of Odinists. Brad Holder, Patrick Westfall, and Johnny Messer were all affiliate, uh, affiliated with the Vinlander group. Johnny Messer's ex-girlfriend, Taylor Hornaday, also confirmed that all Vinlanders are also Odinists and that Johnny Messer, Brad Holder, and Patrick Westfall were all members of Vinlander. Okay, so you got you got what Vinlanders are. So he's going up to hang out with his Vinlander homies. So when Johnny returns back with her vehicle on and around Valentine's Day, it had dried blood over one side of it. Johnny Messer refused to discuss the details of how the blood got there. Johnny Messer's ex-girlfriend further stated that it took her several car washes to finally remove the blood. Meanwhile, Messer has claimed that he had never, not once in his life, been to Delphi, the home of his, quote, brother, Patrick Westfall, and near the home of his other brother, his Odinite brother, his Vinlander brother, Brad Holder. Messer's ex-girlfriend also told law enforcement that Brad Holder and Johnny Messer were two of the most violent people that she knew and were fully capable of having been involved in the murders. Johnny Messer's ex-girlfriend further stated that a motive for the involvement in the murder of Abby and Libby might be the concept of blood in, blood out, which means, quote, social acceptance into their secret circles. All of this information was relayed to Liggett and the Unified command, uh, command Team, yet Unified Command provided zero guidance as what to do to capitalize on this information in order to work towards solving the murders. Additionally, Unified Command learned that Johnny Messer's ex-girlfriend had been listening to and recording Johnny Messer's phone calls. Police secured the phone and listened to three phone calls involving Johnny Messer. In two of those phone calls, Messer was, quote, offering money to other people to find someone so they can be injured or killed, end quote. The third call involves Messer, quote, bragging about holding a subject hostage and shooting them at his house. Uh, <clears throat> essentially, Unified Command said, quote, nothing to see here. Move along. Nothing to see here regarding Johnny Messer and issued no search warrants for his home. None that have been disclosed, uh, disclosed to the defense, nor did they attempt to utilize an age-old investigative tool referred to as an interrogation to pursue the truth about the involvement of Johnny Messer, Brad Holder, or Patrick Westfall in these crimes. Many more shocking facts concerning, uh, concerning this so-called investigation will be, uh, be revealed in the body of the memorandum. All right, and, and kind of the last thing I want to get into, because, J, 